Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. Let's take a look at a video. Our country was found on common law uh, because the Declaration only refers to God four times in the Constitution. It doesn't refer to God at all. And it only articulates the structure of government. So first of all, um, remember that we were a collection of states and colonies. And you need to read the state constitutions before anything else. 13 out of 13 required a declaration of faith. 9 out of 13 required you to be a Protestant, except Maryland, which was Catholic, which still required a declaration of faith. Every single one of the original state constitutions, Pennsylvania included, they had, I profess Lord and Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in the original state constitution. So there are two critical problems with Charlie's claims here. The first is that they're all entirely false. It's simply not true that all 13 of the original colonial state constitutions required some kind of declaration of faith. It is true that nine of the 13 required some kind of religious test for holding public office. And of those nine, only five had anything at all to say about the Protestant religion. And of those nine, only one required anybody profess any faith at all in Jesus. Most of them were just about some kind of generic belief in the Christian religion or belief in the Creator God and the inspiration of the Old Testament and the New Testament. That was about it. And these were part of a belief that was current at the time that religion was foundational to morality and that if we had these religious tests for office that would ensure that our office holders were more moral. And within a few decades, pretty much everybody realized that really wasn't the case. The second critical problem with Charlie's claim is that it is fundamentally distorting to talk about the foundation of the United States of America by focusing on state constitutions, because the U.S. Constitution directly and explicitly rejects any and all religious tests for public office. The fact that state constitutions briefly experimented with religious tests for public office, experiments that all failed, has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the foundations of the United States of America, which explicitly and directly reject any and all such religious tests for public office. Secondly, 55 out of 56 of the original signers of the Declaration were Bible-believing, church-attending Christians. This is also not true. 49 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence identified in some sense with some Protestant denomination, but the degree to which they were Bible-believing and church-attending varied from person to person. You asked about common law. So common law is inherited from Blackstone, who was Christian. This is entirely false. Common law is not inherited from Blackstone. It long precedes Blackstone. It even precedes the arrival of Christianity to Great Britain. As Thomas Jefferson himself, the author of the Declaration of Independence, repeatedly argued. Now, the founders found Blackstone's discussion of common law particularly useful for their rhetoric, and particularly the fifth auxiliary right, which was the right to arms for their defense, and particularly when the sanctions of society and laws are found insufficient to restrain the violence of oppression. So no, common law is not based on Christianity, and even more recent scholarship has pointed out that while it was popular in the 19th century in America to argue that common law was based on Christianity, the data just don't support that. It, a common law is an outgrowth of the scriptures. So let's go to three principles of common law. Presumption of innocence, due process, and jury of your peers. All three are biblical principles. Those principles are not found anywhere in the Bible. So, and all wrapped into the ultimate biblical principle that you shall not favor justice if you are rich or poor, which is in Leviticus 19, right before the most famous part of Leviticus 19, which is that you should love your neighbors yourself. There is absolutely no sense whatsoever in which this is the ultimate biblical principle. But before that is that in the administration of justice, you shall not favor the rich or the poor, which is the idea of blind justice. We get that in the West which is incorporated also in the New Testament ideal, neither slave nor Greek nor Jew, you are all one in Jesus Christ, which we get the idea of human equality. The notion that justice should be impartial and should equally serve the rich and the poor can actually be found in the laws of Hammurabi and in other law codes that precede Leviticus by over a thousand years. These are all biblical ideas, they're not enlightenment ideas. On the contrary, these ideals can be found before and well beyond the reach of the Bible. And while I think they are certainly plausible, and I think good interpretations of many passages within the Bible, they were always minority interpretations that were rejected by the overwhelming majority of Christians until the humanism of the Renaissance and the natural law and human rights of the Enlightenment provided a context 
that made it so more and more Christians could endorse those interpretations and it could become the majority view within Christianity. So it certainly does not originate entirely independently of Christianity, but without the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, it never predominates within Christianity. So it's a lot more nuanced than just saying, these come from Christianity. But more importantly than that, they say that God was only mentioned four times in the Declaration of Independence. Well, that's a big deal. Okay. Laws of nature and nature's God. The last paragraph of the Declaration reads as a prayer. It says, we appeal to the supreme judge of the universe. Who's the judge of the universe? Jesus Christ. It says in Revelation that Jesus will judge the earth on his throne. This is an absolutely laughable misreading of the Declaration of Independence, and in my video number McClellan 2143, I show that Thomas Jefferson and the other men who helped write the Declaration of Independence were referring to a concept of deity more in line with a deist, enlightenment, natural religion notion of providence than they were with the notion of the God of the Bible, and they certainly were not talking about Jesus. Thirdly, as I said on the stage yesterday, Deuteronomy was by far the most quoted book, religious or non-religious, in the time of the founding when they were putting together the Constitution. So this is a claim that I've addressed many times, most recently I think in my video number McClellan 1932, and it's based on a fundamental misunderstanding and misrepresentation of research that was published in the early 1980s by Donald Lutz, who found that if you looked at all political publications from between 1760 and 1805, the text that is quoted more than any other is the Bible, and the book from the Bible that is quoted more than any other is Deuteronomy. But if you think that means the founders were quoting the Bible more than any other text, you would be wrong because what that overlooks is that the majority of those references to the Bible and to Deuteronomy are coming from sermons that were being published in newspapers not from the publications of the founders. And Lutz also looked at the two years during the composition and the ratification of the Constitution and showed that the Federalists never once quoted from the Bible. It's not anywhere in any of the documentation of the Constitutional Convention. It's not anywhere in any of the Federalist papers. It's not anywhere in the publications written by the Federalists from 1787 to 1788. And if you look at the Anti-Federalists, they only quote it in 9% of their publications. So when it comes down to the creation of the United States of America, the Bible was not relevant. But finally, and most importantly, let's look at actually what the founders said. John Adams famously said the Constitution was only written for a moral and religious people. It was wholly inadequate for the people of any other. The body politic of America was so Christian and was so Protestant that our form and structure of government was built for the people that believed in Christ our Lord. One of the reasons we're living through a constitutional crisis is that we no longer have a Christian nation, but we have a Christian form of government and they're incompatible. So you cannot have liberty if you do not have a Christian population. So this is profoundly ignorant and misleading rhetoric that is not supported by any data. John Adams bought into the conventional wisdom of the late 18th century that held that some kind of religious belief was a solid foundation for morality, but pretty much everybody rejected that before too long. And if you would like a good discussion about the data regarding religion in American politics, Frank Lambert's book, Religion in American Politics, A Short History, is a wonderful discussion. And the fit for this video has been Green Lantern.